What is up, weather enthusiasts? I'm your host, Pat's Path Predictor. Let's get right into the weather. All right, so here's the situation we have for you, ladies and gentlemen. We have Invest 95L that has developed in the Atlantic Ocean in the main development region. This is the latest we have for you right now. Right now, there is a 60% chance of formation in the next seven days. 24 hours ago, we were only at 20%. So the chances of this developing have tripled since we've last reported on this on Pat's Path Predictor. So we're going to go ahead and read this real quickly. A small area of low pressure located several hundred miles west-southwest of the Cabo Verde Islands is producing an area of disorganized showers and thunderstorms over the central tropical Atlantic. Although there is dry air located to the north of the system, favorable upper-level winds are expected to allow gradual development during the next several days. This system could become a tropical depression early next week as it moves westward across the tropical Atlantic. Formation chance in the next 48 hours is at 40%. It was at zero just a, a 24 hours ago, and now we have a formation chance of, of 60% in seven days. So mediums all around right here we're going to go ahead and show you the latest storm information we have right here invest 95 l maximum sustained winds are at 25 knots which is about 30 miles per hour minimum central pressure is 1014 millibars radius of maximum winds is 40 nautical miles so this is a pretty small system we have right here we're going to go ahead and show you a couple of things we're going to go ahead and show you some of the satellite right here at least up close because at the atlantic scale it's not particularly large so we're going to zoom in for this real quickly and as you can see we're starting to see a cluster of thunderstorms start trying to develop right here it is battling some dry air once again to the north and we'll go ahead and show you some visible high res to, uh, not high res rather water vapor to show you that uh, this is it right here perfect this is what we got right here there is some dry air to the north of the system that this thing is fighting, but so far it's doing a pretty good job of holding together. There is some moist upper level air that it is going to be interacting with potentially in the next 12 hours or so, so that should help with the conditions a little bit better. There is also some moist air to the south, moist air to the east, moist-ish uh, moist air to the west over there, so that's definitely what's keeping this system in play right now. We're going to go ahead and show you... Uh, the visibility high res just to give you an idea as you can see there's a really good circulation going on there are thunderstorms continuing to develop and fire up we have some pretty decent outflow with this that's your center of circulation over there and that's uh, quite impressive as for an invest right there it's not going to take very much honestly for this to develop if it just keeps fighting that dry air and develops a huge deep layer core in the center of the system now we're going to go ahead and show you the global sea temperatures right here this is as of yesterday right here they've updated the map and look at this this is 29 plus degrees celsius where the system is right now is in that 29 degrees celsius range right now so this has plenty of warm water to develop there's also a lot of 31 plus degrees celsius areas across the gulf right here across parts of cuba the bahamas it's the gulf of mexico is getting primed for hurricane season so Whatever ventures in there, combined with weak wind shear, we're absolutely going to be seeing something really going off right here. Now we're going to go ahead and show you the OHC as of today. The OHC where the system is at is close to cracking 100 OHC, which is kil in reg registered in kilojoules per centimeter squared. That's basically an energy component to this, to, uh, basically showing how much energy the ocean in a particular area has. And if you're seeing an ocean heat content value of over 100, that's already pretty alarming alarming for this thing to be moving through but if you're seeing a lot of areas of 175 plus that's nuclear fuel right there for these systems and especially if they move through the lesser antilles and move through uh, through Jam uh, just south of jamaica through cuba and all that it's combined with a decent a little amount of wind shear it's not going to go well for people that are over there but we're getting ahead of ourselves real quickly we're going to go ahead and show you the shear component to all this we'll go ahead and update this for you the shear where this thing is at, it's very good. The shear is like 10 knots or so, which is very impressive. Like if this thing develops, it's in the prime conditions to do so, and it is continuing to organize. And once it gets towards the Lesser Antilles, however, at least for now, the shear is going to be a little bit more problematic. Although, once it enters the Caribbean, either the shear is most likely going to start tearing it apart. Although, I have seen some long-range models, particularly the European Ensemble runs, having this moving through the Caribbean into the Western Caribbean, into the Gulf of Mexico, 
or even through the greater Antilles and potentially hitting Florida, the shear is going to fluctuate over the next few days. So that's something we need to continue to monitor as time continues to progress. So we'll have to keep an eye out for that shear. But for now, it's in good conditions. And if it develops, now is the perfect time to do it. Tomorrow would be the perfect time to do it. Sunday would be the perfect time to do it. So, yeah, that's the situation we have going on. We're going to go ahead and show you the track models and then the intensity. The track models, as of right now, have this thing mainly staying out in the main development region. However, about four days out, it is expected to approach the Lesser Antilles. Today is Friday. Four days out would be Tuesday. So it is expected to be approaching there starting on Tuesday, maybe as early as, mo as Monday night. We're not 100% sure on that right now. And then this is expected to move through the Caribbean Sea, through that greater wind shear. And from there, it's a bit undecided on what's going on. Will it hit, the, will it hit Central America or will it enter... Uh, Will it move to the north, excuse me, and potentially be a threat to the United States? We're not 100% sure just yet, so please stay with us. Now we have the intensity runs. The intensity models are also pretty interesting. The majority of these runs actually have this as at hurricane strength. Some of these runs are pretty interesting. We have the HMON, the HWARF, we have the DSHP right here. The HWARF has this as a Category 2 hurricane, about five days out, a minimal Cat 2. One of the, this DHSP, uh, DAS, HP rather run has this as a major hurricane in the Caribbean and continuing to intensify depending on how strong that wind shear is and depending on a bunch of other factors I'm pretty much ruling out any major hurricane scenarios considering they're an outlier outlier and even though we have the warm water to do that the shear and the dry air are a bit iffy for that so I'm ruling out anything over a hundred miles per hour for now right here. It is too early for me to give an official estimate on the Pat's Path Predictor channel, but for now we are ruling out basically anything more than a minimal Category 2 hurricane. So now we're going to go ahead and show you some runs. We have the HMON, the HWARF, and the GFS runs to show you. We're going to go ahead and start with the HMON right here. You see this continuing to organize and develop, strengthen into a tropical storm around 72 hours out, about three days out. Then it potentially strengthens up to a Category 1 hurricane as it's approaching the Lesser Antilles, moves north of Barbados, makes landfall somewhere in the Lesser Antilles, or makes a close brush by that, and then moves into the Caribbean, where from there we're not 100% sure what's going to happen. Is it going to strengthen? Is the wind shear going to weaken? enough or is it going to stay the course and just basically be where it is now now we're going to go ahead and show you the gfs of 95l we're going to go ahead and show you that and gfs is an interesting run we're going to organize this develop it it's going to strengthen probably into a minimal tropical storm or tropical depression now we're going to go ahead and show you the h wharf run and the h wharf run you can uh, to see it's starting to organize, develop, starts potentially strengthening into a, a tropical depression to a tropical storm in the next four days or so. And then it starts to really ramp up in intensity as it's approaching the Lesser Antilles. The H. Wharf actually has us making landfall in Barbados, then moving through the Windward Islands as a Category 1, maybe uh, maybe potentially low in Category 2 according to some runs I've been keeping an eye, I've taken a look at. So that's something we need to continue to keep an eye on. For those of you who are watching from the Windward Islands, We'll keep you updated on the potential threat of this. Keep in mind, these are just some early runs. We don't know 100% what's going to happen, but we'll keep you updated here on the Pat's Path Predictor channel. We're going to close the video right here. I hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to leave a like, subscribe to the channel if you are new. It helps us out, helps us make more videos like these. The goal of this channel is to get more people engaged with weather. And if you want to see some behind-the-scenes stuff and how we do to talk about weather in real time on Storms United, join the Discord server. Link's right over there. But with that being said, have a wonderful day, guys. Stay safe.